All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is with this cornucopia, cornucopia of cuteness going on. Hey, wave to the people, LJ. Yeah. Say hello. How you guys doing? Hello. How you guys doing? That's right. And uh, last but not least, we're going to give it up for each and every one of our... Jam Stars! What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh, Fresh from, from the Barbershop. BK is a picture of people's channel. Coming to you live. Coming to you how? Live. With another video, man. Look, man, we got a little bit to talk about today. And um, a lot of time. <laughs> Let's talk about it then. You okay? Just kiss me. No, I don't want to talk to you, Alexa. All right, you gone? I didn't okay. Alexa, nobody's talking to you. Anyway, man, check it out, man. My boy. At Alexa, stop it. Alexa, stop. Thank you. All right, so look, man. <laughs> My boy at me, bro. <laughs> he dropped another excellent video, man. Um, We're going to talk about it. Talking about the competitive nature of 2K or the lack thereof, um, he hit on some points that I I really appreciate because I think that people don't understand a competitive game versus a non-competitive game. And uh, we're going to talk about that. The first thing I want to do, I want to drop one of these excerpts from his video really, really quickly. And then we're going to go from there, man. So let's, let's hop over to his video. I just want y'all to be able to hear this and so he can get the respect that he deserves. Let's hit it. Where the game is much, much slower. This is why fighting games invalidate fighting games that don't have rollback mm. netcode. I know that's a term most of you don't know. Ooh, he's talking that good stuff. Like you're playing underwater online because you can't react to anything. Exactly. That's why fighting game people don't respect online play unless the netcode is immaculate. Ooh. 2K is like a fighting game with the worst netcode. It's like playing Marvel 3 online. Ooh, he's talking about Marvel 3. That's what I'm about to talk about. I feel like I'm underwater. Why does Pro-Am feel different? Oh, it feels like everything's happening kind of slow. It is happening slow. Yeah. The game is slower than the regular game, and the regular game is slower than a competitive game. Ooh, so you're right about that. All that that you're talking about with taking out the randomness of the game, increase the response time. Okay. So that you can increase reaction time and you okay. can pre increase decision time. Okay, he talks some good stuff. And that will make the game more competitive. The right. randomness of, of shooting is low on the list of why this game is not competitive. In I fact, agree. One of the more competitive aspects of shooting, and I know a lot of community disagree with this, Ooh. but all of the evidence that I've seen is supports this point. Mm. Is that better players shoot better in the game. Mix! Now, the pro the hey. differentiating, differentiating archetypes, the fact that a great player on a character with a 65 70 shot Ooh. could shoot as well as a very good player on a 90 shot that shouldn't be in the, the game. game that with shouldn't be in the game at all we know that two players on the same build skill level determines who makes more shots more Ooh. times than not in 2k all evidence supports this and yeah, skill level definitely determines who can make shots like you know spin shots and phase and guys like ticino yeah. don't make those shots at the same rate as these guys do but you know what scrubs do get what they get? Steel animations. Uh -huh. You know what scrubs do get? What they get? Lucky dunk animations. You know what scrubs do get? <laughs> what they Lucky get? Lucky rebounds. Ooh. You know what scrubs do get? What they get? Lucky loose balls. Ooh. Scrubs get that. Oh. And an equal the air ball algorithm. Quote, pro players. Ooh. And what pro player players do is they minimize the situations in which those animations even have a chance to occur. In. There right? you go. So that's pretty much it. That's the number one Ooh, reason. We talking that smack, that would man. Be the worst expenditure of resources you guys could possibly do Ooh. is to try to split this game into casual and competitive. Put I it in agree. One category. Great. A fun, great game that people play against each other all the time to a high skill level. And then from that point, you can start to make it competitive. All right, guys? Not going to keep you here too long. I'm done. Peace out. Ooh, he dropped that mixtape on them boys just now, man. Let me understand y'all something, man. A little bit of what he's talking about. Because I took some notes from the video. And, uh, you know, he, um, he talked about a few things. And one of the few things that he was talking about was how, how uh, it would be very difficult to make this game be uh, something that we would call competitive because of what I always call, uh, well, well, he said the randomization. It's two things that he was talking about. The main thing is the competitive versus the non-competitive play and how all the BS is at the top. Um, you know, well, the, I think the number one thing he said was the, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we roll back and see? I think he said the number one thing was the animations and things like that. And that's pretty much what he ended with as well. Let's go, let's, let's go back and see what he said the number one thing was real quick. Cause I completely, I am completely blanking on 
what he said the number one the number one thing was let's see let's see successful what he said. competitive parts of the game are competitive but there's many areas that simply don't move with the we're gonna back go it up into uh, the pro am arena so i can show you guys okay, many okay. areas of randomness in this game and the most random part of this game is the two player animations okay number one because those animations take whatever the speed of your player is, whatever the jumping ratings of the, your player is, and throws them out of the window, uh -huh. and they're going to move at the speed of that animation. So if you want to make the game more competitive, control that first and foremost. All right? Another thing that makes the game... All right, so that's what he was talking about. He's talking about the animations themselves, so we were right about that. Because the animation, it's stuff like, you know, airball algorithm. When somebody shoots the airball, it doesn't matter how good I am. Nine times out of ten, you're not getting the ball if you're on defense. Um, stuff like when you get somebody locked into um, uh, in, into a hop step animation or something like that. Stuff like that. These animations nullify skill. I think that's what he's pretty much trying to say. Uh, pro 2 and up the court and stuff like that. It doesn't matter how good you are, you're not stopping Pro 2 up the court. And one of the things that I've always said was, and a lot of people don't, don't believe me is, right now in this game, the people, this is something I realized in 2K16 and I said it when we went and played stage and we lost. And I was like, and then we played some uh, Pro-Am and we lost. And you know, so I said, yo, these guys, the best people at the game, it's not really about the skill. And this is something I've been saying for the last three or four years since I've been in the 2K community. The best players in the game are not the best players in the game. They are the people that are the most okay with exploiting everything that's wrong in the game every single time they come down court. The, so that, that's that's what we've learned, that the best players in the game, they're not the people with the best reaction time. They're not the people with the best um, grasp of basketball. They're not the people with the best idea of what to do in certain situations, situational awareness and things like that. They're just the people that know what works every single time and they're okay with using it. And that's why he was saying that you get the best games or the be the fairest games at lower levels because people don't know that you can do all the BS. And then when you come to the stage and stuff like this, you see what we're doing right here. You see guys, this, this, is, this is high level gameplay right here. I'm doing everything that I can to stay in front of this guy and uh, keep him from Keep it from scoring, keep it from doing whatever. And he's running back and forth around the screen just trying to get me caught on the screen because he knows that I'll inevitably get, inevitably get caught by the screen. And when I get caught by the screen, he's either gonna uh he's gonna shoot the jump shot, but I, but I'm not gonna give him the jump shot. And I'm playing on West right now too, so I'm way behind. And uh, we're gonna talk about that in another second. But look, he's just gonna pro two up the court. Look at this, trying to get me caught on the screen, going back and forth. But Josh stepped up, and he can't he can't do anything. And when we, then when he gets caught in a situation where the guy can take the slip, oh here we go, trades up, green bean money team splash now. When he gets caught in a spot where his guy can take the slip, he's just gonna throw an alley, and that can work every single time. This is what the, the quote unquote top players in the game do. They just do, but see, we got ways to stop it though. The better players can outthink that stuff right now. Anonymous came down, he said, I'm gonna gamble right here because we know what this guy's gonna do. But the best players in the game, the top players in the game, that's what they normally do. Inevitably, they just exploit the game at the highest level and uh, 2K doesn't do anything about it. You got something like League of Legends where it's exploiting the game or something like that. Hold on, man, Ren, oh, hold, hold on. Hold on, man. Run, run, run that back, man. I'm trying to see what happened right there. Like, like when that dude hit that shot on me. I, I want to see what happened. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the same thing. Look, I'm here. Look, I got to anticipate that. And then, you know, he shoots the ball. It is what it is. Hey, it's a good shot. Anyway, like I said, you got people that are willing to exploit the game. And that's why you got people that was good last year. And they had they had certain uh, play shots and stuff like that. And they're not good this year because they can't exploit the game in the same way. Because they can't think. If you could think, you could figure out a new way to exploit the game instead of waiting on a YouTube video to tell you how to exploit it. And like I said, people just exploit it over and over at the highest level. That's how it is. And then he talked about Sonic Fox and his movement speed. 168 milliseconds? Oh my God. God, I did a reaction time thing. I hit 191 one time, and that was it. 168? If he can hit 168 consistently, my God, that man is super fast. I don't know what you can really do with that outside of the video game, but you know, I mean, hey, hey whew, one of the best of all time. But see, and he talked about uh, the rollback net code. Pretty much, I mean, uh, it's, it, I guess it would be kind of like what y'all, what we would call like, uh, it just gives you the opportunity to react. What I see on my screen, when I react to what I saw on my screen, it's, it's, it, I, whatever I'm reacting to, whatever I'm seeing, that's what I can react to. Trades up! 
splash down, I can react to. It's kind of like clown. I guess the best way I was I would say something. That I, it's probably most akin to clown side hit detection or something like that. Anyway, it's, yeah, you gotta have immaculate net code because if you don't, then you're gonna you're gonna end up with something like LTG where he's beating everybody. Low tier God beating everybody with trash players online because I'm the low tier God. Go to the tournament and get washed because you got. I mean, you gotta play high tier. To win the tournament, but you understand what I'm saying? That's why you got Yikes with the House of Crack. That's why you got F Champ who invite people over to his house and they play locally all the time. And that's why they play these games on land because the net code is just not there to say it's a competitive game. I literally have to look everything that's happening here. I'm having to do it. I'm having to to guess what this guy's gonna do. I'm having to try to anticipate what he's what he's going to do before he does it. And so it's just so many things that flatten the curve as far as the game's ability to be competitive that you you just can't you can't do it. That's why, like I said, that's why they have tournaments offline. That's why we do the things that we do. Like like right there, look, forty percent, and you can you can hit that forty percent. But that's a center though, so it is what it is. But uh, you know, and then the last thing was the better people hit the better people hit shots at a high. Yeah, because even though I can hit shots like this all game. And I could hit greens and I could do all that stuff, man. My boy T Mizzle was hitting faders at the beginning of the year. Nobody else was really hitting fades at the beginning of the year. And we're talking about the two, the two-point phase. We're not talking about the three-point phase when they were broken. We're talking about after they patched phase, T Mizzle was literally the only person that was fading baseline or going here, going there, fading, and just hitting fades. Because he is a better shooter than 90% of the people. And we try to play straight up, but a lot of times. When we try to play straight up and we play against some comp, 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 quote unquote, we're gonna lose because they're willing to exploit the game to the T and not do anything else. We're trying to do something else. They just they just want to exploit the game because when you get in a situation where it's competitive, all people want to do is win and they're gonna do what works every time. And if exploiting the game is what works every time, that's what they're going to do. And like, what can you do? If you don't take that aspect out of the game, the ability to exploit the game at will out of the game, like I said, how can we ever even call it competitive? I understand exactly what you're saying, man. Go over there and holler at me, bro. Like the video, um, all that stuff, man, because he made some really excellent points, but you need to go watch his video yourself. I'm gonna leave the video link down in the description. I just wanted to touch on some of the stuff that he said, man, and bring more awareness to it because he's absolutely correct. How can we ever say we want ranked and unranked or we want competitive and non-competitive when the game itself isn't even solid yet? Like. For them to get it solid, they would probably have to just release the game. They have to get a base of a game and continue to just improve on a base game. But a lot of people are not gonna want that. They want a brand new, fresh experience every year. Me, I'd be okay with that. I done played League of Legends. I've played um, Street Fighter and stuff. And then he said MV3C online, oh my God. That's why low tech guy can do that. Come out there and play with all them garbage people online. On land, it's, it's totally different, but isn't it? Anyway. Song? Huh? Yeah. You want to sing what? The pants song. The, the what song? The pants song. Rip the pants song? What is that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's why you can do stuff on MV3C online and Marvel, Marvel, Ultimate, Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3 online that you just couldn't do it. You get to a land and, and it's just not gonna work. You're gonna look real. You look great online, but you're gonna look real regular on on land because people can block that unblockable when you do that. But anyway, man, let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. Um. So, like I said, for it to be competitive, I said it in 2K18. They're gonna have to release the same game over and over with minor changes and minor upgrades and minor tweaks and they may just end up having to do something like how league of legends does you get one game you buy it they do a, a yearly update that we could pay for but they would have to just keep updating the game updating the game and making tweaks and, and stuff like that throughout the year i don't i mean that's the only way they could do it but that does not fit with their with their marketing model they're already trying to charge 70 dollars for the next game and uh you know they're gonna do that and they talk about because they put in more work strauss please y'all y'all they don't put they put like we if they're putting in more work we can't tell but you know it is what it is man like i said they got to get the game to be competitive first and I mean, uh, a good game first, just like just like at me, bro. Say it's got to be a good game first. It's got to be a good, solid foundation, and then they continue to to update that and build upon that. Uh, just like, but they tried it. They tried to do 2K18 
and then 2K19 and 2K20, and people said that the games were too similar, so they felt like they weren't even playing another game. Even though 2K20, I think, is a way more polished and way better version of 19, but, you know, people don't want to see that. But I would like to see, like, if you want to see a good game, that's what they're going to have to do. They can't make a, a new game every year, a brand new game every year, and then it's going to be improved upon. You just can't do that. You can't, you know, I mean, you can take the best things from the last game, I guess, and do it, but I don't know. Anyway, man, I got to get up out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go watch At Me Bro's video. I tweeted it out, and uh, I'm out at y'all next time. Till next time, it's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Got speed.